Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book reading. And what we're going to do today is read Sandman number eight, um, the first appearance of death from the second Sandman volume that came out in, began in January 1989. And the writer for this, the creator for this, uh, is Neil Gaiman and uh, in collaboration basically with Sam Keith and Mike Dring, Dring, Dringberg my apologies for not pronouncing that correctly uh, they came up with this universe and the way Sandman began the reason Sandman came to be was basically it was sort of a uh, I don't know if it's a byproduct but it basically came to be because of the uk invasion during the uk invasion of um, artists writers and artists and creators uh, that hit the dc universe in the 1980s and alan moore was really sort of one of the pioneers for this as was grant morrison and neil gaiman and a lot of other uh, british writers and creators right and artists that came out during that period and this is sandman number eight i'm going to crack this open and hopefully well we will lose the glare on it because i have this in mylar and this is the first appearance of this character here death and we're going to get into a little bit of history of the universe that uh, basically gaiman created neil gaiman created which is extremely in-depth very intricate universe the mythology on it is brilliant it's at par with every other great mythology uh, throughout history that human beings have created and that's saying a lot right and as you can imagine there's a lot to talk about here so this is going to be sort of a little introduction to the universe that Neil Gaiman created and the character here that we're going to read the first appearance of right and the way it came out was basically DC Comics right had an idea to re-envision the Sandman character that was really created in the golden age of comics it came out um, the first appearance came out in the in 1939 I believe and uh, basically that character had certain attributes of the Sandman character that was sort of reintroduced revamped in 1970s in 1974 by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby right and what basically happened was DC Comics approached Neil Gaiman and they asked him to reimagine the Sandman character and try to create a series around it and Neil Gaiman um, just uh, just so you know he was a he's a British writer and his fame uh, he basically acquired a lot of fame from this series and he's published a tremendous amount of comic books and a tremendous amount of books based on this universe as well as other fantasy science fiction uh, universes that he's created okay I, mean, I know I'm sort of jumping around a little bit but there's a lot there to unpack and we're gonna try to tackle some of that okay so this is the first appearance of death okay uh, basically created by Neil Gaiman and Mike uh, Dringberg right because Sam Keith that initially was involved with the Sandman books he basically worked on issue number one to five and after that he left the series and Mike I won't pronounce the name but Mike was basically brought on to work on the Sandman universe with Neil Gaiman and Mike basically worked on 11 issues and there was a lot of other artists and pencilers and inkers that worked on this series as well there were basically um, three to four creators that stayed with the series all 75 issues for the whole run one of them was obviously Neil Gaiman that wrote this series right uh, envisioned this series the other person was Todd Klein which did the lettering for this series and the lettering for this series is absolutely brilliant let me give you a taste of some of the artwork that we're talking about here okay 
this is the first trade paperback i don't know if it's the first print of it or not um i should be able to find this out i don't know if it's the first print it might be the first print but uh, that, that uh, introduction copy uh that, that cover on compilation i don't know if this is the first print but basically this is the type of artwork that we're talking about it is absolutely brilliant okay magnificent it might have been a little rougher at the beginning because the universe was just starting to be created okay and this is sam keith's work that we see here and it's only for the first five issues but what you end up seeing with the lettering let me find a good panel for you for the lettering uh about where we see dream talking okay and it was ground bear breaking um, as far as the lettering is concerned because basically the first character that we're going to take a look at or the character that we're going to take a look at right now is death right and death is uh, part of a family siblings that are called the endless and there's seven endless characters there's seven siblings that occupy this universe and occupy basically a their realm which is called the dreaming okay and what they ended up doing for this series was basically for each of the seven endless characters and the characters were basically called dream which is the main character of the sandman universe and dream is this character right here okay also known as morpheus more I believe so anyway but we're going to refer to him as dream okay for each of the siblings from the end from the from the endless uh, Todd Klein came up with different word balloon styles okay so dream had this black background white lettering with a little white you know surround on it right and each of the seven siblings had different type of lettering on them and the seven siblings are known as dream death which is first appearance in sandman number eight that we're going to read destiny desire destruction despair and delirium which was also known as delight okay also went with the by the name delight so here is dream talking and the lettering is unique especially for dream and this sort of comes into play towards the end of the sandman series i've read spoilers unfortunately i mean take a look at this this is classic classic sam keith look at that beautiful beautiful artwork right absolutely magnificent series okay so todd klein that did the lettering for this series he was with it from issue number one all the way to issue number 75 as far as i know okay and the one person that really gave you know contributed a fair bit to the comic book in terms of its uniqueness was uh dave mckeon and dave mckeon did all the covers for all 75 issues of the sandman series so there was a brilliant consistency for this universe that neil gaiman created okay and just to let you know um one more thing i'd like to mention uh because i mentioned about alan moore right and uh, if you recall we did a i put out a video regarding um sort of a local television program i used to watch at university during the early 1990s and it was called prisoners of gravity and prisoners of gravity was a series that uh sort of local television series that was available in ontario on a local tv channel that was basically about um science fiction fantasy comic book genre talking about all the possibilities of our society and some of the some of the characters and just basically universes being shared through the through science fiction fantasy and the comic book genres right and in that series that i believe ran for about five years or so you can take a look at the video we put out um talking about that series with Com commander rick right but in that series commander rick interviewed neil gaiman a few times or a couple of times at least 
and he cut out cuts parts of those interviews into multiple videos right multiple segments right but he had a couple of in-depth interviews with Neil Gaiman and I remember in one of those interviews he asked uh, you know Neil Gaiman how he got into comic books and how he you know how it is he thought about creating comic books coming up with the Sandman universe and Miracle Man and stuff like that and how it was taking over from Alan Moore and I recall him mentioning that uh, and I'm going by memory here I wasn't able to track down that video there was a lot I went down the rabbit hole with this with this reading because I want really wanted to do it justice right because if anybody if you read this universe the Sandman universe it it deserves to be uh, portrayed in the right light which is something that I'm trying to do give you the history of the creator DC Comics how it played out in the comic book industry which was extremely important and how it was that came to be right and basically Neil Gaiman in that interview okay this is something that he mentioned he stated that he was at a train station with his father and I'm going by memory here so don't quote me on this uh, if you can please track down that video okay and I will if I track it down I will link it in the description of this video he stated that he was in a train station with his father waiting for the train to come right and while they were waiting he went into a local you know convenience store and he picked up an issue of saga of the swamp thing by alan moore okay and i believe he mentioned it was the first issue of saga of the swamp thing by alan moore not the first issue that alan moore took over from the previous writer because alan moore in the first issue was sort of finishing off the story from the previous writer but issue number 21 i believe it's issue number 21 of alan moore swamp thing and if you haven't read this series this is basically the first two trades of alan moore swamp thing it collects issue number 21 all the way to number 34 i believe if i'm not mistaken uh, ba, 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 ba. let's check this out let's make sure we're correct on this yeah this one is the second one it collects issue number 28 okay to 34 and there's multiple printings of this i believe this is the first printing and this one is the first printing and this collects issue number 21 to number 27 okay and neil gaiman mentioned that the first time he really appreciated what comic books were capable of is when he picked up this issue saga of the swamp thing by alan moore and the other creators which is stephen bessett and john todd libin okay and he read through this and it blew his mind and that planted a seed for him where he really went on the course to create comic books to write for comic books and this series as an aside is absolutely magnificent it is a must read for any comic book aficionado anyone who's interested in science fiction fantasy anyone who's interested in lore mythology and basically humanity in our society okay absolutely brilliant okay uh, I just wanted to lay that out there uh, just to give you a feel of where Alan Moore uh, where Neil Gaiman has come from and what he was you know the footsteps he was following and he he did a magnificent job magnificent job on everything that he did and his masterpiece many would agree was sandman okay so this is issue number eight this is what we're going to read now just to give you a little history of the comic book medium and how sandman played out uh how important it was for the comic book industry and this this medium that we share information and uh artists and creators create contests for us to consume now sandman came out a year after hellblazer number one hellblazer was introduced okay so dc comics was printing some 
comic books. Swamp Thing was one of them. Hellblazer was one of them. Sandman was one of them. Animal Man, Doom Patrol were two other ones. And they were printing some series titles that were more mature related, right? But one thing that was going on back you know in the 1990s 1980s it started off in the 1950s and we've talked about it and that's the uh, comic code authority right censorship in comic books and all of this came out in the golden age of comics where um, a book was released saying that comic books were polluting children's minds and a whole bunch of hysteria broke out and people freaked out and there was book burning comic book burnings and um, boycotts and there was congressional hearings and and whatnot and we covered a fair bit of that information in a previous video we did or two videos we did one of them was talking about the comic code authority and and reading the code itself right so dc comics was printing some comics which were a little bit more mature related so they saw sort of the tides turning right so what they ended up doing was under the control of DC Comics they came up with a new imprint which was called Vertigo okay this name right here and Vertigo exists right now to this day it's an imprint of DC Comics sort of a subsidiary of DC Comics where they print more mature content right and what DC decided to do during that time and this was in 1993 okay where the Vertigo imprint came to be what they decided to do was create the vertical imprint and release all the titles that were more mature under the vertical imprint and that included sandman swamp thing doom patrol um uh animal man uh black orchids and a whole bunch of stuff and just to show you how important this uh this vertical imprint is to the comic book medium and to a lot of readers including myself because death is one of the most beloved characters in the dc universe it is extremely important and there's a lot of people that got into reading comics because of sandman because of neil gaiman's work right and this is sort of a trade paperback that i picked up a while ago i'm not sure when this was printed i believe i picked this up uh, at a at a discount bin of all places um when was this printed okay and this is sort of gives you a history this trade paperback is called vertical vision artwork from the cutting edge of comics right so they came up dc comics came up with this imprint to sort of put all the titles that were not in uh, this was printed in 2000 okay all the titles that were sort of more mature related under the vertical title right and basically this book this trade paperback is really nice actually it's a fantastic trade paperback if you look at your, like your comic book history it sort of goes through and breaks down you know what was going on with vertical comics and dc comics at the beginning and then sort of the different phases of things kicking in all the way to trans metropolitan everything that's being put out right now right from preacher and whatnot right and it goes through and it gives you sort of a layout of the first few books well actually a lot of the books up to 2000 i guess that they were printing under the vertical imprint and this is swamp thing and as this is brilliant right and swamp thing i believe the, went under the vertical imprint with issue number uh, 47 or it might have been sandman that was went into i believe it was sandman that went into the vertical umbrella with uh, issue number 47 okay and this is swamp thing i mean brilliant artwork and brilliant storytelling this is hellblazer and as you know hellblazer as far as i'm concerned was the one of the greatest titles ever created okay and this is the dave mckeon did a lot of covers for hellblazer as well okay and brilliant this is one of the covers this is one of my favorite color covers from hellblazers hellblazer number uh 61 done by uh glenn fabby right 
and you can flip through this and i believe sandman is the next one that they talk about yeah sandman is the next one that's covered okay in this trade paperback and shows you shows you some of the artwork and talks about some of the history some of the artists creators the dreaming is another title that came out that was based on the dreaming being the universe that the endless their home basically and the endless are basically the character death you know being one of the seven siblings of the endless they're basically uh beyond gods they've they've existed since the beginning of time and they basically have a s certain power that they use based on the function that uh, they have been assigned to be right books of magic was absolutely magnificent as well and this was written by neil game and um i love the books of magic especially the first uh the prestige format that came out i believe it was three or four prestige format right so the endless are basically uh you know people consider them to be natural forces and they have a certain function in life and their lives cannot en end unless they want their lives to end okay and that has occurred a couple of times in the endless uh, mythology okay so we won't flip continue flipping animal man was absolutely magnificent as well especially when grant morrison uh well grant morrison's animal man i guess you would call this right so that's the vertical vision if you can get your hands on the trade paperback of this it'll give you a nice history and a sort of chronological order of you know how important vertical comics was to the comic book medium okay and just on the point of vertical comics now vertical comics the imprint came to be in 1993 and that trade paperback in, came out in 2000 right so we have a seven years of history in that trade paperback talking about what what's transpired since 1993 and the way dc comics released vertical title the imprint was basically by releasing a death miniseries this is the first issue this is the second issue and i have the third issue as well okay they released the death three issue series and number three is buried somewhere i couldn't find it right and at the same time they were releasing this they converted all the titles that they were going to release under the vertical title with the vertical logo on there right which included sandman with issue number 47 included animal man swamp thing and whatnot right so death was really you know the starting point of vertigo comics and the special that they had dc you know really pushed this this imprint right this series and the way things were going to unfold just to let people know that this was not going to abide by the comic code authority the incentive that they gave comic book retailers at the time was that if they had ordered 25 issues of the first vertigo imprint for each of the titles they would get a special death platinum issue death platinum of number one so it was a sort of an incentive cover of death number one but it was called the platinum death number one and retailers that ordered at least 25 issues of each of the first vertical titles they would get a copy of death number one okay and i have a copy of that unfortunately it's not in amazing shape but that's another story that we'll get into at some point most likely okay so there's three issues mini series and this was a fantastic little mini series okay and as far as where death has gone since sandman now sandman the story arc existed outside of the main dc universe for quite some time they crossed over with some of the vertical titles but death made her first appearance in the main dc universe with action comics okay number 894 and this is the artwork for the first appearance of death in the regular dc universe okay and should we crack this open take a look at how 
death look like in this well it looked like that but basically she and i've read this i got this in a previous comic book haul and i showed it to you i hadn't had this before right and let me just take this off let's put the tape here and let's take a look at this and basically the story of this is lex luther is dying dead on the verge of death and death meets him because death is basically sort of reimagining of the death character that we know of in mythology and her role is really to be present when someone dies and when someone is born so her her power is sort of to help in the transition of life to a certain degree right I'm, i'll read you a couple of things that i want to read you um, quotes that i came you know i came across when i was going down the rabbit hole for this right but this is sort of the artwork for this comic book right and you can get this fairly on the cheap uh, i've seen it go for dollar two dollars up to four five dollars if you you know go with buy it now on uh, on ebay it's more expensive it's just the auctions that you can get it on the cheap okay if you're lucky enough okay so keep that image in mind because when we read uh sandman number eight uh, it's the same character but it's a little heavier to a certain degree um, just so you know and each artist has their own sort of reimagining of the character and just one more note regarding death before i read you a couple of quotes that i want to read you uh, regarding this book that is just recently this year uh, dc or i guess it's been in the works a couple of years for dc comics but this year basically dc comics released their first issue of what is called the dreaming and i believe there was three number one issues uh, done you know telling different stories telling different stories and whatnot they were standalone comics but it's basically bringing the sandman universe into the fold of the whole dc universe and this was i haven't read this one yet and this was issue number one of the dreaming the sandman universe entering you know the realm of the dc universe where they've announced that they're going to be creating a lot of new characters and bringing back some of the older characters and it's going to take some of the secondary tertiary characters that were introduced in the dreaming series which was i believe 60 issues long and expanding on them right so just they just basically opened up a whole new universe with tremendous potential that we're gonna have the pleasure to read okay and i still haven't read this one yet so i can't tell you what's really going on in this and i didn't really want to give any spoilers to myself so i didn't really look up to see what the story was that was being shared in this in this standalone okay so aside from that let me put these guys away and what we're going to do we're going to crack open sandman number eight and i'm just hoping that you know i covered as much as i can in this little short little introduction to the dc universe okay or to neil gaiman's sandman universe that he created okay and this this comic book as far as great goes uh, i'm not sure if this is the issue that i've read <laughs> when i bought it because i have uh, a handful of copies of this uh, i liked loved sandman when it was coming out but this comic would be considered to be you know there's a little bit of i don't know a little bit of uh coloring uh you know i don't know if it's a smudge but wear i guess right there but this would be considered a 9.2 if you were generous you would give a 9.4 if you weren't generous you would give it a 9 
right? So this is graded at near mint, near mint minus maybe. Near mint plus I believe is 9.6, so it's not a 9.6. Not in my book anyway. Maybe some people will grade it as a 9.6, I doubt it. Right. And the back cover. Right. I would give a I would give this a 9.2 personally. Okay. Near mint minus. If you weren't being very generous at all, you were being extremely hard and unforgiving. You would give it a very fine near mint, which is uh, 9.0. Okay. Now, before we get into the reading of this, let me read you a couple of quotes because I was going to summarize who this character is and the endless and and whatnot. But I want to read you uh, and where this character came to be. And this character came to be from uh, a real life person. Okay. So let me read you, you know, I printed some quotes here. My apologies, I'm gonna read this to you, but I think it's important uh, to read these to you. And my printer still, I haven't fixed it up yet, but it works, okay. Now regarding the endless, which death is one of them, the seven siblings that have been around since the beginning of time, they have existed for billions of years, and from some accounts they will come to be they will only end when this universe ends and they will come to be when a new universe is created right here's a quote this is uh, in sandman volume 2 number 48 and this is destruction which is one of the endless explaining who the endless are right the endless are merely patterns the endless are ideas the endless are wave functions the endless are repeating motives the endless are echoes of darkness and nothing more and even our existence existences are brief and bound abounded none of us would last longer than this version of the universe okay and that's one of the endless saying who the endless are okay and here's another little write-up from DC wiki explaining who did, who death of the endless is right death of the endless came into existence shortly after uh, after the first life forms appeared in the universe she would function as the embodiment of death until the very last living thing died and that after that she was destined to put the universe to rest okay. death is both lord and personification of all death and life death meets with the recently deceased and guides them into their new existence unlike most personifications of death she also visits people as they are born evidently only she seems to remember these encounters okay and in terms of immortality of the endless like all endless death can only be hurt by means that is allowed besides if all if an endless is destroyed its personification and powers are instantly transmitted to another person who must become the new embodiment of the aspect right so death is really as we mentioned sort of a natural force of function that death has to has to be right and here's another a quote regarding the origin of death okay uh, according to Neil Gaiman the initial vi uh, visual design of death was based on a friend friend of Mike Tringenberg's named uh, cinnamon Hadley right and let me read you this quote from Neil Gaiman and Mike is basically the artist that took over with issue number um, da, da, da. he inked issue number one to six and he took over the penciling work uh, from issue number seven I believe okay and this is uh, Neil Gaiman uh, talking about death right death is the only major character whose visuals didn't spring from me that credit goes to Mike uh, Dringenberg in my original Sandman outline I suggested death look like rock star Nico in 1968 with the perfect cheekbones and perfect face she has on the cover of her Chelsea Girl album okay 
but Mike Gingerberg had his own ideas so he spent sent me a drawing based on a woman he knew named cinnamon Hadley the drawing that was later printed in Sandman number in Sandman 11 and I looked at it and had the immediate reaction of wow that's really cool later that day Dave McKeon and I went to dinner in Ch in Chelsea at the at the my old Dutch pancake house and the waitress who served us was a kind of vision she was Ameri she was American had long black hair was dressed entirely in black black jeans t-shirt etc and wore a big silver anchor on a silver necklace and she looked exactly like Mike Dr uh, Dringenberg's drawing of death okay end quote and the person that death was sort of created the vision uh, the visual uh, cinnamon um, cinnamon Hadley she passed away at the age of 48 January 6 this year in 2018 okay and at the time when she passed away it hit my radar and uh, I ended up reading the trade paper back again issue number one to eight of Sandman okay but here is uh, there's a uh, and I'll provide the links to this website uh, in the description of this video but here is uh, an interview that was conducted by cinnamon uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right and this is the question that they asked her right how did you get involved with Neil Gaiman right and this is her reply and I'm quoting right now Mike Drinkberg the original artist for the sand for the Sandman was a good friend of mine he asked me one day if he could use me as a character for a comic book I said sure I didn't know anything about comics and I didn't know know it was even anything special I certainly had no idea it would be what it it would be what it is now funny story about three years after Mike asked me if you could use my likeliness I was living in Houston having moved from Salt Lake City and I was at a friend's house my friend told me his favorite comic was the Sandman and showed me an issue when I opened it I saw a picture of myself staring back at me it was one of the two photographs actually used and just inked over I said oh my god that's me I had no idea I was in the, I was in the Sandman and I had even forgotten about being asked by Mike to use me as the model right I thought that was uh, important to share uh, with you guys and what we'll do right now is have a read through Sandman but there's one other thing I want to show you right and I've shown you this in a previous video that we did um, when I showed you my graded comic book collection and I don't have very many graded comic books uh, you know I have maybe eight of them and three of them are issue number one two and three of Sandman that's how important this series is to me and many other people and as far as I'm concerned that's how collectible it is right and I bought these as far as I'm concerned on the cheap 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 and these prices here they're Canadian right so this comes out to about $78 $80 US so this is Sandman number eight the number one graded at 9.4 okay for those of you that like graded comics I thought you'd get a kick out of this here's Sandman number two graded at 9.4 and check this out I paid $50 Canadian for it right basically around $40 US a little bit less and here is Sandman number three graded at 9.6 that cost me $40 Canadian which is around you know 28 30 dollars or 30 dollars 32 dollars Canadian or US my apologies right and these are three of the prides in my collection as well and I do have the original Sandman series uh, fairly deep fairly deep okay so I thought um, what we do now since we've done a nice little intro to this is have a read through this 
And what I'm going to do as well, there's a pretty in-depth introduction at the beginning of this. And we're going to read the first page of it and the last paragraph of that introduction. Okay. Because it sort of gives you a summary of where we are. And just to give you a heads up here, actually, I'll show it to you. I'll show you the panels after uh, we do that reading in the trade paperback, maybe. But a brilliant cover. Absolutely beautiful. All right. The cover, again, uh, by Dave McKeon. All right. Let's take a look at this. And take a look at this. Pub, uh, publisher, publishorial, so publisher ed editorial, I guess. Janet Kahn, president and publisher, DC Comics. Let's read the first couple of paragraphs of this, but I want to read you mainly, I'm going to read you some of these things, the sort of the quotes, and I want to read you this first page, sort of that builds up to the story here, okay? But I haven't read this yet, so let's just read the first couple of pages, uh, a couple, couple of paragraphs of this, okay? I, might, uh, I walked into Mike Gold's office and stopped short. There on his desk was a thrill, thrilling piece of artwork. Hawk's man visage resonate, uh, resonated from out of the background. Bold, imper, imperious, primal, and all his primitive hawk gear. Uh, the burnished golds of his helmet and pulsated helmet pulsated against the basic field of midnight blue this was a character to be reckoned with hawk world will be this will be in store so this is sort of giving you let's check this out mike da, 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 da. yeah this is sort of talking about what dc comics is releasing i guess right so we'll skip that part because it's not really related to the sandman universe and we got a fair bit of reading to do in this right sandman goes beyond their wildest dreams so these are some creators that you know have commented on sandman so let's read well there's Al alan moore here for sure steve bissett has uh, worked with alan moore so who's this guy ramsey campbell author sacred stiff the incarnate hungry moon the influence let's read that first one okay the theme and territory of dreaming are as vast as the imagination of whoever deals with them and i wouldn't and i couldn't uh wish for better guys than neil gaiman and his collaborators their sandman is clearly an adventure for them and a and a treat for the rest of us witty disturbing unpredictable as a dream it should be a cause for rejoicing for all those who value the fantastic right here's alan moore okay with sandman mainstream comic book fantasy finally moves from enchanted forests populated by elves and barbarians towards the haunted contemporary dreamscape of jonathan carroll or clive barker bizarre and fascinating Pretty high praise from Alan Moore, eh? Steve Bissett, Sandman is the latest and most playful entry in DC's horror trilogy. Swamp Thing and Hellblazer honorably precede it, and Dark Mer uh, Mer Mercule Journey into the Dream Plane, written with precision, wit, and vision. Forget the Golden Age Sandman, Neil Gaiman's Sandman is here to stay agreed 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 even though we like the golden age sandman and exact and what kirby had done right clive barker what does clive barker say neil gaiman is a star right i can look at some of these who else should we read fantasy author well this is high praise. There's a lot of praise on this. Let's read the first page intro. Okay. In the 
beginning, but of course we never see the beginning. We come in in the middle after the lights have gone down and try to make sense of the story so far. Whisper to our neighbors, who's he? Who's she? Have they met each other before? We get by. In this case, let us imagine our neighbor to be to be tall, robe perhaps in old monkish garments, his face hidden in the shadows of his cowl. He smells of age and dust, not unpleasantly, and is in his hands he holds a book. As he opens the book, leather bound, undoubtedly, and every word in it traced meticulously by hand. We hear the click of metal and realize the book is chained chained to his wrist. Never mind, we have seen strange things in dreams, and fictions are merely frozen dreams, linked images with some semblance of structure. They are not to be trusted, no more than the people who create them. Are we dreaming? Possibly. But the man in the robe, talking, his voice is like the rustling of old parchments in a library. Late at night, when the people have gone home and the books begin to read themselves, we strain to listen. The story so far, okay? And this part of it goes into what has transpired in Sandman number one, okay? It was not enough that Roderick Berger was an evil man. He was a vain one and presumptuous. He was not contempt with riches or with the leadership of the old uh, order of ancient mysteries. Although the order was in, no, uh, was, in, was in no wise ancient, having been f founded only 16 years earlier at the return of the century by Burgers himself, he desired notor 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 notoriety among his peers and he craved physical immortality. The year was 1916. In the world outside the Great War dragged on, and a fa fawny ring, his Sussex house, Derek Burgers conceived a plan. He would capture death, bind the Reaper, right? And death that he's talking about here is the death, the first appearance that we're going to read, right? But this is occurring in Sandman number one. With an invocation, with a stolen gr grimoire, he performed a rite of summoning. I suspect he was in true surprise when he, uh, in when his invocation bore fruit. When a figure took shape in the set, uh, in the circle in the basement of his manor, it was not death. The man in the circle was dressed in black, his head hidden by a helm carved of bone and glass and metal. Fires danced in the velvet darkness of his robe. Around his neck hung a precious stone, a ruby, and by his side was a leather pouch drawn tight at the top by cords. But did Burgers know then what he had got? Did he guess at the forces that had already uh, weakened Morpheus, the Lord of Dreams, that Burgers' chance of summoning had provoked the final straw to someone, something already tried tried almost beyond endurance okay now what's being explained there is what is being shown in sandman the first few pages of sandman okay that's number one, the one that I have graded, and I have other copies of it as well. Right? Showing this, showing this. Right. And he does the magic invocation, and dream appears, and he's right there. Right? And that is what is being explained, sort of giving you a background of what's going on and the text sort of goes through and explains what has occurred so far up to issue number eight which this issue is happening and keep in mind this person that captured dream was really trying to capture death
Okay. Now, let's go to the the text here is going through, and let me read you this paragraph here. Okay. We are still listening to the story, waiting for some kind of conclusion. When our neighbor's uh, neighbor closes his book, the cold chains that bind blind destiny to his book ching quietly. The story, of course, far from finished, but we know we will get no more of it from this from this source. And discomforted, we take our leaves. The mists are rising, and it is time to be getting back. We come in in the middle, watch for a time, leave before the lights go up. If there are no beginnings, then there are there can be no endings. We are alone in the darkness. Every answer prompts another question, and things are happening all the time. That's all you need to know for the time being. Trust me, the story so far, maybe it's all we can ever hope for. And we enter issue number eight of Sen. Right. The writer Neil Gaiman, artist Mike Dringenberg, Malcolm Jones the third. Okay. Colors by Robbie Bosch, letters by Todd Klein. Associate Editor Art Young and Editor Karen Berger. Okay. The sound of her wings. And this is dream here. Okay, the person that we saw that was captured. Okay. Let's take a look at the artwork. playing soccer boom boom flat 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 the pigeons are dream punt the ball was flying towards him hey mister someone calls out and he grabs the ball without even looking that was a killer catch, man. Totally wicked. Can I have the ball back? Hmm. Oh, this? Here, Dream says. He drops it and kicks it. Boop. Punt. Thanks. You want to play ball? No, no. Thank you. I am feeding the pigeons. Dream says. That's cool. And we see death entering. doing death says feeding the pigeons dream replies
you do that too much you know what you get fat pigeons she says that's a line from mary poppins I love that movie. You ever see it? No, Dream says. There's this guy who's literally a banker and he doesn't have time for his family or for, for, for living or anything. And Mary Poppins, she comes down from the clouds and she shows him what's important. Fun, flying kites. All that stuff. Super, <laughs> I got it. Super fragilistic, expand the cautious. Super fragile. I could never say this when I was watching Mary Poppins. Super fragilistic, expand the cautious. <laughs> what? Dream says. Like a pigeon sitting on his head. Super Cali, Cali fragileistic expialidocious. Super Cali fragileistic expialidocious. That's a great way to break it up. Literally. Fabulous word. Huh? It means, you know, great, wonderful, ginchy, gnarly. That says, peachy keen. She says, waga, 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 vroom, yee. Huh? It's a cute movie. Maybe not everybody's thing, but you know. That says Dick Van Dyke's British accent defies belief. Oh, it's a jolly old day when you muddy pants. Venice. You know, cute. I mean, how do you pronounce that? Jolly. Olidi Vin you Mary Poppins. <laughs> That's Mary Poppins. Oldi Vin you Mary Poppins. I can't understand those words. Beautiful. He's a little sad. Okay, so what's the matter? Death asks. Take a look. Right. He's brooding. Okay, so what's the matter, Dream asks? Or Death asks. What do you mean, Dream says? What's the matter? I know something's wrong. I mean, look at you, sitting there, moping. It isn't like you. No, perhaps it isn't. I don't know what's wrong, but you're right. Something is. Something is the matter. When they captured me, imprisoned in their box, I had just one thought, revenge. By the time I freed myself, my original captor had, had gone the way of mortals, and I took my vengeance on his son. It felt, it felt fine, I suppose.
but it didn't feel as satisfying as I'd expected. In the interim, my dream world had fallen apart. I needed my tools, long since stolen and scattered. One by one, I found them. Eventually, I found them. The pouch was relatively easy. To regain the helmet, I challenged the demon, dared the hordes of hell, face down Lucifer himself. Ah. That left only the ruby. The ruby was a human had been using it. I hate to think what toll it must have taken on his mind or his soul. We fought in dreams. The stone, no longer mine, was sucking me into its fabric. It was terrible. And thinking it was my life he was crushing, he destroyed the ruby. He destroyed it. It freed me. More than that, I freed everything. It freed everything of me that was in the stone. I got it all back. I was more powerful than I had been in eons. I returned the human to the madhouse. You see, until then, I'd been driven. I had a true quest, a purpose beyond my function. And then suddenly, the quest was over. I felt drained, disappointed, let down. Does that make sense? I had been sure that as soon as I had everything back, I'd feel good, but inside I felt worse than when I started. I feel like nothing. You asked, there, you asked, I'm sorry. Maybe I don't have an answer. Have you finished death says yes dream of lies you could have called me you know i didn't want to worry you dream says i don't believe it let me tell you something dream and i'm only going to say say this once so you better pay attention You are literally the stupidest, most self-centered, appalling, appallingest excuse for anthro, anthropomorphic personification of this or any other plane. An inf infantile, adolescent, pathetic specimen. Feeling all sorry for yourself because you little, your little game is over and you haven't got the the balls to go and find a new one? Boop. <laughs> she hit some on the head. <laughs> what was that? Like a water bottle? That's funny. I don't believe this dream you're a bad as bad as 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 desire or worse didn't occur to you that I'd be worried silly about you that says hey a scream comes from the side the balls flying towards them again I didn't think dream says 
That's exactly it. You didn't think, you lummox. You overgrown, bubble-headed. Boop. She catches the ball. Oh, she's pissed. Look at this. That is angle your dream. Wow. The person that kicked the ball says, give me strength, Death says. Another killer catch. You're as mean a ball player as your friend here. He's not my friend, Death says. He's my brother and he's an idiot. Just feeding the birds, Dream says. Just feeding the birds. Look, I can't stay here all day. I got work to do. Can you come with me? Or you can stay here and sulk. I don't mind either way, Death says. I'll come with you, I suppose, Dream replies. Don't do me any favors. Take a look at the whole panel. So, hey, Fox, like, uh, you want a soda? Could I see you again? <laughs> Soccer player says. Sure, Franklin. You'll see me again soon. Okay. Huh? How do you know my name? My name's Franklin. And they disappear. Off to the dreaming or somewhere else. travel with that soundless we travel no heads turn to mark our passing the churning crowd parts as we walk through it looking ev everywhere else but not at us in the world of the waking of the living we move silent as a breath of cool wind as we pass them people shiver and look away mutter to each other feels like someone walking over my grave i heard one man say like someone just walked over my grave violin music echoes down the stairwell sounding frail and out of place i recognize the tune although it is being played very badly i heard it last in london 200 years ago these are dreams thoughts we know because of the of the text right of the word blues can you rock her Romani, can you powder flash? Can you rock a Romani? Can you fake a bush? <laughs> Guys singing. Yes, I can. Powder <laughs> Romani. Harry, can you? Huh? I don't hear nobody come in. The guy says. That was death replying, right? Huh? I don't hear anybody come in. Can I patter Romani? Not so good, but I can make a Bosch. Means to play the fiddle. I'm not real Romani, the guy says. And Romani is uh, the correct word for gypsy. Okay, Romani, I believe so anyway. Used to play the restaurants and clubs when I was younger. Scarf around my head. You pick up sc stuff. Huck is hacking. 
coffee. No, I'm no gypsy. I'm a yid, an old Jewish dying lonely in New York, you know. Yid, I believe, is Yiddish. Yes, I know who you are, Harry. Do you know who I am? You? You're... No, not yet. Please. Yeah, I know who you are, he says. up again excuse me something I got to say always used to wonder if I would but you know what hey what they hey Shama Yusrael Adona Allaha Nu Adona Elhud hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one I think he just passed away right there. Right. He said his prayer and passed away. Right. And there he is standing right there beside that, watching himself. Beautiful visual. I look so empty. I look so old, he says. It's good that I said the Shema. My old man always said it, guaranteed you a place in heaven if you believe in heaven. So I'm dead. Now what? He asks. Now's when you find out, Harry. <laughs> Death says. She draws him close. From the darkness, I hear the beating of mighty wings. Oh, there's a wing in the background, right? All the hash, the pattern. I thought he was sweet, didn't you? Death asks. Sweet? I do not know. Perhaps, Dreen replies. My sister, when I was captured, it was not me they wanted, it was you. Yeah, I know what Death says. Come on, I don't want to miss the next one. Afternoon, nobody wants comedy. They want to drink in peace, make assassinations, do their deals. Esme has to fight for every laugh she gets. It, be it beats waiting tables. That's the comedian, I guess, right there. Right? She's going to uh, the next person that's going to die. Her hands are sweating. Seriously, don't you ever wonder about Batman? How he got started? I can see him over breakfast saying to his wife, Morning, hun. Listen, I got something to tell you. I, uh, I quit the job at the ad agency. So what are you gonna do now, Ralphie? I got it all figured out. I'm gonna dress up like a bat and fight crime. Ha 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 ha, people say. You're gonna what, Ralphie? Have you talked this over with your analysts? And the laughing. And what about Robin? Now that kid, she continues. Right, the 
Canadian. But if they had captured you, the consequences, Dream asks that, right. he's still continuing on from the conversation. They told her that it was her that they were looking for to capture, right? From Sandman number one that we found out. Shh, I want to hear this, Death says. She wants to hear the punchline about Robin. So what was the build up to the punchline? And what about Robin? Now that what that kid was. <sighs> hey, my bell, reach out and kill someone. And this deep voice says, Well, there's more here, more where that came from. Oh, we might have missed the punchline. They like her, waves of approval, of sweet laughter wash over her. Now she's going places. Yike. She's a scream. Ha, 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 ha. I think she gets electrocuted, yeah. Touching the microphone. Yike. Oh, oh. She got fried. Take a look. Those assholes. I don't believe it. That screw win Mike was alive. Those cheap, no good. Who are you? She asked Death. She's standing there looking at her own corpse. I just realized that's every comedian's nightmare, huh? Dying on stage, hee <laughs> hee, she says. I thought you were really funny, Death replies. No, but I would have been, she says. Why wouldn't I have had a few more lousy years? I would have made it to the top. Why, she asks. I'm sorry, Esme. Your time was up. Come here, honey. I hear the sound of her wings. I <laughs> dream again. He's just tagging along. Needs the company, I think. Needs the company. No one here gets out alive, the background graffiti says gets me down too mostly they aren't too keen to see me they fear the sunless lands but they never but they enter your realm each night without fear just talking about the human beings us right and i am far more terrible than you my sister dream says Anybody die over here? We don't know if anybody died here. I swear that's a Stevie Ray Vaughan hat. Take a look at that. Stevie Ray Vaughan used to wear a hat like that. I wonder if some of these characters are uh, stars of the past. I wonder what that is. Oh no, baby. Ucha, ucha, ucha. Ba, 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 ba. Baby's laughing. KK. K. No, no. Death picks her up. Or him up. The baby. But. Is that all there was? Is that all I get, the baby says. The baby can talk now, right? Yes, I'm afraid so, Death replies. That's all the baby gets. Just a few days or a few weeks, I guess. 
the sound of wings, dream says. The mother comes back in. Look, Buffal, Mama's got you something lovely, honey. The mother walks towards the crib, drops the milk. Oh no. No. The baby's dead. through a whole bunch of different people as they're dying as death does her work does her function and dream thinks I find myself wandering about humanity their attitude to my sister's gift is so strange why do they fear the sunless lands it is as natural to die as it as it is to be born but they fear her dread her feebly they attempt to pl placate her this person drowned this person took too many pills they go deed maybe a suicide So check this page out most likely a suicide a drowning an accident old age and murder right brilliant brilliant the background dreams make no promises take a look at this love the details in this art dreams make no promises right let's continue with this page but they fear her, dread her, feebly they attempt to placate her. They do not love her. Many thousands of years ago, I heard a song in a dream, a mortal song that celebrated her gift. I still remember it. Death is before me today, like the recovery of a sick man like going forth into a garden after sickness and that's in quotation marks so it's the song that dream is remembering right death is before me today like the recovery of a sick man like going forth into a garden after sickness still quoting the song oh this is an overdose death is before me today like the odor of a of myron like sitting under a sail in a good wind death is before me today like the course of a stream like the return of a man from the war galley to his house death is before me today like the home that a man longs to see after years spent as a captive that forgotten poet understood her gifts my sister has a function to perform even as i do the endless have their responsibilities i have responsibilities I walk by her side and the darkness lifts from my soul I walk with her and I hear the gentle beating of mighty wings look at that page beautiful
dream talking to death. You have taught me something I had forgotten. I thank you, my sister. To me, man, over here, the guy says, they're back at the start by the fountain with the kids playing soccer, right? To me, man, over here, he says, Oh, that's what family is about. Death replies the dream, thanking her. Little brother, listen, I've got to head back soon. It was good to see you, Death says. Just one last appointment, and then I have to go. You have given me much to think about, dream says. Right. As he says that, Death looks away. Yo, Franklin, the kid's playing, yell out. Oh no. They throw the ball. Yo, Franklin, I'm telling you, man, she said she'd see me again soon and she knew my name. That's one bad lady. Get the ball, bug brain. His friend says. Ball bounces in the streets. Scree. Car slams on the brakes. Whoop. Franklin. His friends yell out. Oh no, look at the face of the lady. Devastated. gets nailed look at that right. and the ball bounces right to dream and death again right by their feet wow when that car came out I thought I was gone for sure that what you <laughs> that what you thought death says hey it's you when you said you see me again soon i didn't think you meant this soon hold that thought franklin see a dream don't be a stranger okay dream waves goodbye now death says talking to the boy now before you say anything else you better come over here there's something you may uh, you may you may be ought to see she walks him to the accident there goodbye sister dream says There is much to do in my kingdom, much to restore, much to create, but that can wait. I have found the solace I thought, sought, though not in the way I imagined. From dreams I conjure a handful of yellow grain. I throw the grain into the air, and I hear it, the sound of wings. And one of the things with Sandman is spreading sand around, but it's grains that are spreading around. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the pigeons are flying again, the sound of wings that we got introduced to at the beginning, right? With the sound of wings. Right. Feeding the pigeons. Flat, 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 flat. 
An absolutely beautiful story. What's the back of this? That man. Very nice story. As for the comedian in here, she didn't realize Batman has never been married. He almost got married. Right. And that's Sandman number eight, the first appearance of death. Right. Fantastic story. I hope you enjoyed. And if you like that read, most definitely check out this series. It is well, well worth reading. That's it for now. And I'll see you guys in the next video.